Welcome back, everyone. Today, we're going to be tackling a pretty big topic that um, has a lot of different options and a lot of different uh, room for customization and creativity. But I want to try and cover as much as I can, knowing that we can always revisit it in the future. But I want to talk about creating beautiful HTML documents in org mode, mostly if you wanted to use them on your website. For example, my website is built with org mode, but you could also take this HTML and put it into a content man management system like WordPress or Joomla or Drupal probably, or if you have your own custom site with one of the, the different web frameworks that are out there. Uh, this is just a great way to build some beautiful HTML, and uh, we'll get into it today. Uh, I've got some notes prepared because, hey, look, we, we've got a lot to cover. So, you know, pour yourself a hot drink, relax, and let's get into this. All right, so you know I've, I've got a, some other videos out there about, you know, my, my introduction to writing, composing, written material in org mode is out there. But, um, you know, HTML, there are so many different options. And if you know a little bit of CSS or even some JavaScript, you can really go a long way to building some incredibly dynamic uh, sites. So let's uh, let's get into it here. I think what we'll do is we will open up a file in the temp directory and let's just call it, uh, you know, org.html.fun.org. And let me go ahead and save that. And let me make sure that when we export this, we'll be able to open it. Yeah, okay. So Firefox has no problem reading from the from the temp directory. I didn't think it would, but I just wanted to, to be sure. You know, I didn't want to get stuck. Okay, so uh, first things first, you know, let's talk about some, some basic formatting. Uh, as I'm sure you already know in org mode, these asterisks, you know, represent different heading levels. So you've got heading level one up there, and then, you know, this is, is heading level two. Uh, but of course, what's important to note is that when you export to HTML, the level one does not become an H1. It becomes an H2, which is good for, uh, you know, for SEO purposes and things like that, because you're typically on a web page. The only H1 you should have on there is the title of the page or the title of the blog post or whatever it is. That is what you want the search engines to understand is the title of the document. So org mode lets you do that by converting this level one heading to an H2 uh, because it's inside the document. You know, your title will be up here, you know, beautiful HTML. And this will be an H2 and this will become an H3 because it's a level two and so on down the, the hierarchy. So you know that. Um, and then, you know, you've got your basic formatting. So, so let's say your basic formatting for emphasis or italics right there and you can uh, use these asterisks to let's say embolden your text and you can also underline uh, with underscores not underscores underscores and uh, so there you go. So that's some some very basic formatting. You know, this is all pretty basic stuff. And um, as I've as I've mentioned before, let's let's put my author in info in here, just just for fun. And um, as I've mentioned, you can export documents in a few different ways. So let's actually do uh, control C, control E. And in the dispatcher here, you see we have a uh, body only. So you can, you can just do a very basic HTML export. Let's actually see what that looks like. So let's do H and then O for open, and it'll open up our browser. And you see all it has here now is the, is the contents of the, the document uh, as, as bare HTML. It doesn't have, um, the all the additional HTML that org mode puts in, which you can also customize. That's a little more advanced, but we can, you know, we can, we may cover that if we do a video about creating websites with org mode. But basically, yes, if you just do if you do a body only export, you just get plain HTML, which is, uh, as I've mentioned in the past, is very good for 
like copying and pasting into your your content management system or wherever it's going to go because it's it's just plain HTML and no un, like not the additional header and footer that org mode puts in. Uh, so that's that's good. We might use both back and forth as we go through here. All right. So next, um, I've got a, a micro lesson that came out recently about this, but I'm going to talk about it again, the, the structured blocks. So for example, if we wanted to put in some, some source code, you know, if there was some ELISP, you could, uh, you could put that here. And um, what's more uh, specifically relevant for something like HTML, you know, you have the, the block quote element. So here, it says, you know, begin quote, end quote. So, you know, this will be a block quote when it's converted to HTML. And these are um, what you might call uh, relative. So they're not specific to HTML. So if you're exporting this to something else, you know, um, a different document might have different styles that it or different um, con different containers and tags that it will put for for quotes and source, uh, which is one of the cool things about org mode is, is it goes to so many different places. Um, but as you'll see, uh, there are also ways that you can use these structured blocks for things that are specific to HTML. So there, there there's one here, let's, um, let's just put in something like random like like source code. So in HTML five, you have the aside element, uh, or um, the, the aside tag, now I believe, so let's put in some content as an aside. So I believe this will work even if we, we don't specifically indicate that we're using the HTML5 uh, doc type. Let's do a body only and export this again. So now when we, when we view the page source, Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. So pardon me. Yeah, we, you, you will have to, uh, put HTML five, but, um, you'll see when, when you just use the, the, the structured block and you put in a side, for example, it assumes you want to assign it as a, as a div. So now I have a, a div, uh, set up as an aside. So let me, um, let me pause the video one second and uh, put this into HTML5 and see if I can do that. Hold one minute. Okay, I'm back, folks. Yeah, pardon me. I just had to verify that. So yes, if, um, see, I, I learned something too in the midst of all this. Um, under the options here, you can also set this variable in your configuration or uh, per document. So for example, here in the options, uh, I put HTML5-fancy and set it to T. And now when we export this on the HTML side and we view the page source, let's see if I can make this bigger. So now you see there is our block quote and now we have an aside and it has uh, this ID. Uh, and we'll see how to customize those IDs later. But now you see you've got the aside element and the the content is nested as a as in, the, in a paragraph tag uh, inside of it. So if you want some some CSS for how you want to do asides, for example, you can all you need to do in org mode is uh, put something in this uh, this custom block. Uh, now, if you if there isn't an HTML5 element for that for what you put, like if if you did for example, um, let's say we did our own structured block. And we called it, uh, you know, uh, uh, Git Master Chris, for example. And uh, Git Master Chris, we put some uh, some content in there. What it will do is is what we had before, which is it'll just make Git Master Chris a a div element. Uh, so there you go. It creates a div with a class of Git Master Chris. So yeah. So if if you're doing a different CSS styling. That's another way to do it. You can use your uh, your structured blocks in that fashion. All right, so uh, let's see. Let's see what else we've got. Source code, block quotes, HTML5. But one other thing I find helpful is the, the verse element. So let's say you have, um, you know, you're, you're doing a, uh, 
in, in your page you're you're putting some lines of poetry or something so uh, what's what's important in poetry is that the the line breaks um, come in properly so some poetry uh, goes on a line the line breaks and it goes on so now instead of the so what, what would happen is if, if this was in a block quote it would just keep going to the end of the line like regular prose styling but if we use the verse what it will do is as you can see here it will retain those line breaks so when we look at the source you see um, it put it put some br tags at the end um, so there may be instances in which you know that is important and you might want to use that so uh, another option for you another structured block that i think is is helpful to know about all right so what is next okay so um there's also a way that you can you can control different attributes and options in your um, I mean, I'll call these attributes, uh, but they might have a different technical term. So, uh, for example, there's some there's some example code here from the documentation that we can reproduce. So you do attr underscore html colon and another colon controls controls width and like a token value or whatever you know 350. This is from the documentation and then begin underscore video remember so we're in a structured block here another hash plus html colon source src equals movie.mpeg4 and type video slash mp4 close the tag then again so this is demonstrating how in your org mode document this is one way of including some some literal html for times when you might need to be specific in this fashion so we've got these these are basically some some videos that we're including an mp4 version and an aug version and i guess then the, the alternative would be if you don't have support your browser does not support the video tag and this should work because we've uh we put in the options html5 fancy and now end video so if i typed all of that correctly and we'll find out if i did uh, we will see. Oh, I almost didn't. There you go. I knew something was wrong. Okay, so now we see within our, our our video structure block, we've got some custom HTML here, and um, we've also got some attributes. So now let's send this out to HTML. All right. So it seems it to work. Obviously, this is not linking to a a real video, but uh, we, looks like we've got the, the syntax uh, correctly. So when we view the page source, so you'll see here it um, it gave us a div because that's that's uh, that's customary in the org mode export. Um, there's our H2 for attributes. That's part of the document. Uh, what we customized starts here. So remember, so we created a video element. Remember, we put in those attributes controls. You see, we put them in here just by adding these these colons. So the colon controls. This was that was the attribute. This is the value, and the the value of width we also set. And then you see on the back end those came through as well. So what this is demonstrating is that you can really get pretty granular in how you are defining your your HTML elements. Uh, one other thing you can do here. Uh, there is another structured block for for basically uh, exporting HTML as written. So you you don't actually have to go through all this effort. Let me actually show you something interesting here. So if I highlight what we did up there, and I do a function uh, with meta x called uh, org HTML convert region to HTML. 
uh, you can actually see there uh, what it gave us on the back end. And now you could simply put this into an HTML export block. So if, if you didn't want to, to bother like having org mode do the, con do the conversion on the other side, uh, you can actually just write HTML by hand. And then when this is exported to HTML on the back end, it will, it will keep everything just as you've written. So again, another way to be exactly specific, you can just, if you're comfortable writing actual HTML source code, you can just include it in the org mode document and org mode will export it literally exactly as written instead of converting it. All right, and there are some, some other uh, HTML. Well, these are not just HTML, these are for other documents as well, but they show up in HTML, so subtitle. So this document is titled Beautiful HTML. We can put a subtitle, how you too can write beautiful HTML. And um, you can also put a description. This is my description of my document. And the idea here is that um, if I am correct, and we'll find out this description, uh, I don't use it very often, but maybe I should. This is a way of creating a, um, a meta description. So if, if you're um, interested in having a, an SEO optimized page uh, to whatever extent possible, this might be something you want to use. So let's, um, let's go ahead and export this and do body only. Actually, no. We will we will probably not do body only this time because we want to see if our uh, if our meta meta description came through. Uh, so you see here, uh, there's my subtitle: How you too can write beautiful HTML. And uh, so what you're seeing here that there is some CSS, um, a lot of CSS actually uh, applied to this document that comes in the the heading, which we exclude when we do the body only export. But now if we if we view this page source here. So there we see the meta name description. This is the content. This is my descript of my document. I didn't write description. I wrote descript. Uh, but that is, um, you know, the, the search engines don't have to use that, but uh, you're you're giving them some content that you might want them to use. And of course, um, you might want to use the the correct number of characters for um, that are optimized for search engines. But but there you go. You can put in some some. Uh, some meta in there for the search engines to pick up and for your title they will pick up the the title of the document but if you wanted to do like a meta title i believe you could do that as well and um so you see here this is the the head of our html document this is style that that org mode puts in there and of course you can customize all of this if you want to get really granular uh, but what i what i wanted to show you before we wrap things up, there's another option called uh, HTML head extra. So you can, this is a way that you can put um, extra stuff into the head of your document. So if you had, you know, a link to um, a style sheet or something, you could put in, you know, link to style sheet. So for example, if you had, um, there are some pre-built or org mode HTML themes that people have written where you can just basically put in, in your HTML head, a link to the, the, the GitHub resource, and it will style your document in, um, in some pretty beautiful ways that people have designed. But, um, this is the place where, where you can do something like that. So I'm curious if this will actually, um, so it, this will put some extra content into the head of your document. I'm actually curious. Uh, let's see. Oh, I did body only. We didn't want to do that. Uh, let's re-export it. We'll close some of these here. I don't have to keep opening it again each time, but I, I do. So let's um, let's just export it, refresh it, view the page source, and let's see. Did it put did it put my extra content in the head? probably put it toward the bottom. Yeah, there it is. Link to style sheet. So, uh, yeah. And it put it right before the closing of the, of the head tag. So, um, this is not correct HTML, but if you had a legitimate link there to, um, to a style sheet or something else you, you wanted to use, that is where you would put that. All right. And what else have I got? 
Oh uh, yeah, before I go, of course, uh, you can do you know different different ways of linking. So for example, if I had some some text here, uh, you probably already already know this. Uh, you can highlight a region of text, Control C, Control L, and you know you can just put in a um, a hyperlink here. You know, uh, example.com. You know, now that's a link, but you can also do it. It will not render to anything, but but that's okay. You can also do internal linking uh, with with a, a custom ID. So how do we do custom IDs? Well, um, as I showed you, remember when we when we looked at our document here, uh, if we look at the page source, you'll see that the this H2 has a um, an ID of org two five four one eight one. It just assigns this this random. Uh, sort of like hash here to the to the IDs. Uh, you can put in custom IDs uh, with a, as a property. So Control C, Control X, and the letter P for property, custom ID, and the custom ID value. Uh, so this is a, a heading about structured blocks. So we'll put that as the as the custom block, the custom ID. And so now up here, if I wanted to uh, to link down. Uh, maybe we should link to something down further at the bottom. Uh, it might not render, but that, or it might not show the page, but that's okay. Actually, yeah, let's just go ahead and move this down to the bottom. Let's see what happens. So let's say I want to link internally to structured blocks. I could highlight this, Control C, Control L, and I could just put in, you know, as the link, hashtag structured blocks. And that should link down there to structured blocks, and it'll do that in the HTML document when you export it. So actually, let's uh, let's go ahead and do that. Let's see. So structured blocks, yeah. So it's we're not going to see it, but you see, if I click on it, the URL went to two structured blocks, but there's not enough content on the page for it to scroll down. But it will scroll down to the to the anchor link, uh, just as it does. Um, in the in the table of contents as well, and you'll see the um, if if we look at the page source in the in the table of contents, you'll see that the the href goes to structured blocks, which was our custom ID, not the the, the random org IDs up here. Uh, all fun stuff, very cool stuff. Okay. Oh, and uh, one last thing. Let's put in some images because you know what is your what is your rich document without some images. Uh, so let's actually see if we can do that. So one of the easiest way to include images is you just start writing file and you give it a um, a file path. So let's give it a let's give it a complete path just in case. So home Chris pictures uh, dumpster fire dot jpeg. <clears throat> So now when we export this, control C, control E. Boom, we got a beautiful image of a dumpster fire. And all we put in was the word file colon copied by or uh, followed by a, a file path. And um, there's there are some HTML elements that we can add to this. So for example, um, let's see if this works because I don't think I've ever tried this. So we're going to see in real time. So you can put a caption. This is a dumpster fire. So let's see what that does. Oh, there you go. Figure one. This is a dumpster fire. <laughs> I like that. I might start having to use that because that's pretty cool. Whoops. Uh, so yeah, so this is a dumpster fire. Okay, so captions work, and of course, um, you should be able to, if you inspect this element here, it'll, you'll probably have a uh, a caption element that you can, yeah, fig fig caption. So you can you can put some CSS styling on that as well if you wanted to uh, change how it's rendering. Uh, pretty cool. And of course, you'll want to pay attention to the file path of the document root of your website to make sure these images render properly. 
when they're on your website, uh, which would be obvious. And uh, of course, uh, another thing that is important, uh, some people believe, for, for SEO, you can put another HTML attribute here, ATTR underscore HTML colon. Uh, you can put alt tags, so colon alt. Uh, you know, so what, what we can put whatever our alt text we want to be, we can say dumpster fire. And um, uh, you can also give it a title. Fire. Oh, and you could even, if you wanted to align it differently, you could put in um, uh, alignment. Um, let's put center. Let's see if that does anything. Okay, so it didn't align at center. Let's look at the source code and see. Da, 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 da. Where is it? Ah, okay. All right, so yeah, so there's the source, there's the alt tag, there's the title, and a line, a line center uh, may not mean anything, or maybe you can... We can put some CSS on that. But yeah, so basically anything, I could probably put style. I could maybe, if I put style and put in some CSS, you could do like some, some inline CSS. Uh, but there you go. Yeah, so you can, you can add additional HTML attributes to whatever tag is being rendered from the, the org mode elements. Uh, so there you go. Uh, so that that is uh, how you can create some, some beautiful very beautiful org mode HTML stuff right from right from this very simple beautiful Emacs text editor uh, there's a few things we, we didn't cover of course like you can have uh, you can build a website by having a, a list in the org mode publishing function that will go to a directory grab all the org mode files and export all of them to HTML so that's how you build a website for example uh, we may cover that in another video and of course, you can also take your org mode tables and have those become HTML tables, and you can also style those and put different attributes on it. But that's um, that's you know maybe the topic for another video. Uh, I just wanted to kind of give a, a pretty detailed introduction here to creating beautiful HTML documents in org mode. Uh, so I will leave it there. And um, if you guys have any comments or questions, by all means, leave them below. If you like this, the, give the video a like and share with someone who you might think, you know, needs to write more beautiful HTML. And of course, subscribe for more zany content. But I'll see you all next time. Thank you for watching. Thank you for letting me be your talking head today. See you next time.